Hello. Hello. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. What about you? I'm I'm doing good. I just refilled my coffee. Um, I have a donut that I won't eat during this recording. Oh, what I'm flavor? Very excited about it. What flavor? Um, I actually don't know. So my oh. my mom is here today watching Nat because she does that a couple days a week, mm -hmm. and she gave me a donut, and I was like, cool. Nice. I can't eat this now, but <laughs> I'm excited about it. So yeah. You know, um, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk about Matomo Analytics, mm -hmm. which is our last tool in the Splashing Around Install Trying to Apps uh, series. I'm actually pretty excited. Um, you know, I mentioned in the last session about URLs um, that um, I was kind of excited because it's very different from the type of tool, U URLs, URLs, whatever. Um, <laughs> However you Something say like it, that. I know how to pronounce this one, I think, Matomo. <laughs> it looks like I know how to pronounce it anyway. Um, and uh, I'm very pronounce excited. Most, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a soft O. That's probably not a thing, but. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, th th this sounds really fun. Yeah, I'm excited because it's very different from a lot of the tools we're typically talking about in cPanel, right? It's not mm -hmm. a CMS. It's not okay. like WordPress. It's not like Omeka in that those tools are designed to make a public website that people can visit and, and you know, you can put content on making that easy and for whatever your purpose is. URLs is not for that. It's a link shortener. Matomo is not for that. It's a Google analytics alternative. So it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a suite. Well, it's not a suite. It is one tool. So I guess it's not a suite of tools. It's a pretty it sweet is, tool though. It, it's a sweet tool. <laughs> that's not a suite of tools. Um, that lets you get more in-depth uh, data about folks visiting websites that you uh, maintain or own or whatever. So mm -hmm. um, the, big, the big tool in the space is Google Analytics. Um, there are others that I'm not very familiar with. I've used Google Analytics in the past for, I used it for my own site for a little while just to like learn about it. Um, that was years ago. And then I used it at a previous job because that's what they, they used. Mm -hmm. um, I am far, far from an expert on it. Mostly I would log into Google Analytics and be like, Google Analytics and be like, wow, a lot of people visited the site last month. Like that's, that's kind of all I got from it. Um, we, um, and tried to, but, but I will say like, you know, for folks out there who know things about analytics, you, you probably know that there's, <laughs> they power the web, right? Like that's what advertisers use to keep, keep track of um, what people are clicking on and, and what people who are talking to advertisers use to say you should advertise on our site. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very big and important thing. It's a big business. Um, and the main criticism of, you know, using something like Google Analytics is that all of that really important data about the people visiting your site is going to Google. So yeah. um, who is, you know, an advertising company. So a lot of reasons not to love that. <laughs> um, and uh, um, so Matomo is cool because it, it does a lot of the things that Google Analytics does, um, but you can host it yourself. Um, so uh, I'll pull up their website really quick here. Um, but uh, it, they, you know, they they pretty straightforwardly build themselves as, hey, this is an alternative to Google Analytics, um, and it protects like it. your your customers' privacy. I like to mention that that's true to an extent, right? It protects your customers' privacy because you, the host, the person hosting Matomo, are the only one who has visibility into that data. It is still important though that you are still tracking the data, right? Like yeah. you're still tracking that, so. I just protects your customer's privacy from Google from other people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, I, I will say the, the, we could easily turn this into a whole data privacy thing. And I, I, I know the two of us have lots of feelings about that. <laughs> lots of people at reclaim have lots of feelings about that. Um, but you know, it, there is something for, Hey, not putting all of this in one pool of a giant company is valuable. So mm -hmm. um, very valuable, I would say. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of those things we talk about with anonymizing user data means a lot more when it's not all in one giant silo. So, um, so anyway, um, if you're, uh, familiar with Google analytics, this probably makes sense to you. If you're not, you know, it's a high powered, 
uh, tool that that keeps track of what people are visiting what pages, right? Um, and uh, you can do some of this in cPanel just out of the box. There's some very basic tools in cPanel in, I think it's called the stats section. That stats, be, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or it might be stats and analytics, yeah. Um, that just gives you like, hey, this is how many people visited this page. Um, and this goes a lot farther than that. So it'll tell you things like this person seemed, or this, it's not person, but this device really, uh, visited this page and then went to this one next. Um, mm -hmm. So it keeps track of that kind of stuff, which is sort of interesting. Um, it's also worth pointing out that none of these analytics tools are perfect, including the one in cPanel. Like they're all going to give you different numbers because yeah. of a lot of factors. Like some of them keep track of, you know, every time a web, like the Google search indexer comes by and that's a visit, right? And some of them are susceptible to being blocked by ad blockers. Right. Um, my, I use an ad blocker and it blocks the analytics on my own website. <laughs> um, so <laughs> well, you're not skewing your own data then. That's yeah. Good. So that's, that's good. Um, but it's kind of interesting because you might think, oh, well, you know, maybe because you're hosting it yourself, it won't get blocked because it doesn't have the domain name google.com attached to it. But no, a lot of these ad blockers are sophisticated enough to know what a JavaScript tracking tag looks like and what it does. And it, as soon as it does that, it says, shut it down. I'm not loading that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's kind of interesting to me. But um, yeah, anyway, so that's what Matomo is. Um, and I, I'm, I'm mostly interested in it as um, I started using it a few months ago. I, just because it came up around a lot of our discussions around WordPress multi-site and how people were getting data about how many people were visiting particular sub-sites in a multi-site. And out of the box, WordPress does not have anything like that built in. There are some plugins that can do that, but every um, statistics or analytics plugin I've ever used is really heavy on the web server, including this one, by the way, Matomo. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really hesitate to recommend to people to put a tracking or analytics plugin right on their WordPress multi-site because I worry that it may actually slow the WordPress multi-site down as that project gets larger, right? Um, I the feel nice like thing had, about I was just going to say people write in and be like, why is my site so, so slow? And if you go in and there's an analytics plugin and a bunch of other stuff, but the analytics plugin is going to be one of the heavier hitters on that list. Yeah, I've never personally had to help someone remove that from a WordPress multi-site. I'm not saying we haven't as a company. I'm saying Taylor hasn't. Mm -hmm. But I have helped people remove it from a single WordPress yeah, that's... site that was slow. And so to me to extrapolate that out to a multi-site, your problems just get bigger, basically, yep. as the site Scales gets up. bigger. Um, so the cool thing about doing this with Matomo is this would be separate from your WordPress multi-site. In fact, it doesn't even have to live on the same server or service even. Like it, it can live somewhere completely separate. We'll show what that looks like. So um, you can basically punt that problem out to some place that you don't care if it's slow, right? Like if it takes 10 seconds for me to log into Matomo Analytics, who cares, right? Like because. Once a week, once a month to check but, the numbers. Yeah. I mean, in my case, once every few months when I remember that it exists, right? And um, way not, you know, not a big deal because you're not slowing down your WordPress dashboard uh, for editing pages or the maybe the site itself. Um, yeah. So that's, I think, the advantage of this kind of third-party solution for that. So. Um, so using Matomo, or I should say installing it, pretty easy. So we can install it via um, Installatron. So I'm, I'm in my, C, my cPanel on shared hosting here. I'll go to all, all applications to get to that browser tab. Uh, Matomo theoretically is somewhere in this list. I'm just gonna search for it though. Mm -hmm. Here we go, I'll install it. Um, I already have an installation, so I'm gonna I'm just going to put this one on a, a little subdomain I have for testing stuff called demo. We'll keep it at statistics. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'll set a password. Install it. Um, so that's all it is to install it. Um, from here out, we're going to use my existing 
um, install because there's actually data in it because I've been, of course, using it. So my real one is on a subdomain called analytics.jaden.me. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, uh, go there. Um, I should probably log out of it, I suppose. Um, it's worth pointing out that, um, so let me, let me log out of it. It's worth pointing out that, um, oh, I'm, I guess I did not log out correctly. <laughs> um, that uh, in case, I probably brought this up before, but in case you didn't know, oh, I logged out of cPanel instead. Amazing. Um, that's fine, I guess. Um, the the only place that magic login link works is WordPress. Mm -hmm. um, other tools, it, it's it's not integrated like it is for WordPress. So you will have to know whatever password you set up. Um, so that's important. You can always change it from Installatron, um, but you know it's worth pointing that out. So I'm logging into my Matomo install here, and this is what it looks like. So again, if you've ever looked at Google Analytics, this sidebar is going to look real familiar, including even the words they use to describe it. There's like a behavior tab and an acquisition tab and, and stuff like that. Um, this is the analytics for for just a couple of my own sites. So I have this set up on my blog, my peer tube, and one other domain that I really just use for link shortening that I uh, mentioned in the last one on URLs. Mm -hmm. That's a third way I've said it today. That's amazing. Um, so um, uh, anyway, uh, URLs, URLs. Um, uh, so I have it on those three sites. They're not particularly traffic sites. My blog is not the hottest blog in the blogosphere. <laughs> Um, but uh, I wanted to show my actual data here so we had something to look at, right? Like mm -hmm. if we were looking at a blank one, it would be pretty boring because there would be literally nothing. Um, so there's this dashboard tab that gets you like real-time statistics. So this this is things that happened in the last 30 minutes or last 24 hours. Um, there's some like basic like, oh, here's some, you know, getting started tips. There's a little welcome video. Um yeah, it's kind of like the WordPress uh, dashboard page where this looks nice. I never actually go here and do anything other than go to these other tabs. But theoretically, mm -hmm. you can customize this dashboard and make it a little bit more useful for you. Um, so I can go to uh, the visitors page and look at some um, uh, basic mm -hmm. overview statistics. I can look at a visits log, which will actually just you know show me uh, That's in, just for the 15th, right? Yep, just for the 15th. So this is the folks Actually, that visited it later? yesterday. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That. Perfect. Um, so I can um, change this and say like, oh, you know what? Let's look at, I don't know, the month of April. And I can look at all of the individual visits. So you can see here it will give you an IP address. Um, and then actually, um, a uh, it'll attempt to map an IP address to a country. Um, mm -hmm. So that's um, kind of interesting. You can see from here, um, there's, you know, it'll show you the title of the page and the URL of the page. You can also look at a visitor profile, which will mm -hmm. try and look at, hey, what do we, what else has this particular IP done um, in general across things? So in this case, Someone visited the blog, went to page two, and then never visited it again. They're like, nope, not for me. Um, maybe it's because they're from Italy, you know? They're if like, that wasn't a Firefox user, I'd say maybe it was Jim, but. Yeah, we know it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Plus, Jim would read way more. Yeah, probably. I, I think so. I mean, he's commenting. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, you can. Um, so, this is kind of interesting, too. So, you can see, like, in this case, someone visited my desk setup update video in in their base in the US, I guess. And then from there, they clicked on a link to the monitor that I'm using and mm -hmm. another Amazon link of some kind. Um, so that's kind of interesting. One of the things that a tool like this can accomplish that cPanels can't, right? Because yep. cPanel is just recording from like the web server log, basically. It's looking at the web server log and saying, yep, we got a hit. <laughs> and this Someone is- showed up. Yeah, this is actually a JavaScript thing that's doing a little more sophisticated work and saying like, okay, they left the page for this page now. Um, so yeah, they went to this page and then they clicked on this uh, link to a monitor I mentioned and also 
the monitor arm. So maybe they're yes, like okay. curious about what I was using for that. So that's kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You can also get this kind of information from within your site too. So um, uh, if I go to, um, I think it's behavior, um, I can look at um, like entry pages. So these are the pages people visit when they first come to my site. And these are the pages they most often leave to basically. Okay. So interestingly, a lot of people, uh, I suppose I have to, oh, exit pages. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I got that backwards. So these are the pages that people leave from. So you can see that a lot of, a lot of people hit my blog's homepage and then immediately bounce. So <laughs> that's fair. Um, uh, that's just how that works. Um, so th basically it's, you know, a lot of ways to slice the same set of data and look at mm -hmm. it and try to understand it. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all these reports because I am far from an expert on them. Mostly what I've looked at is sort of basic, like the visits log kind of thing mm -hmm. and the overview tab. And I will adjust the, you know, time frame I'm looking at basically. Um, and so, but, uh, the, the, it's, I think, good to know that, you know, if you're looking at this coming from Google Analytics, there is a basic comparison to what they have over there. Um, if you're doing any fancy stuff with like flow tracking, which is sort of like how do people move through your site? Mm -hmm. um, that is something Matomo offers as a paid upgrade. It's not built into the software. So there's, there's actually plugins um, for Matomo. If I go to the settings here, um, and then um, Liebitz system Clean. plugins, yeah. Um, so the, these are plugins that, it, the whole thing is plugins, to be clear. Like okay. even logging in is a plugin, but um, you can actually get um, other plugins um, and, and enable them. Installing plugins from the marketplace or uploading zip files. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where that marketplace is because I've never really... I think they had a Used link to it. it at the, oh, or there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid, right? So you mm -hmm. can have like multiple user accounts and you can manage them. Um, I don't have that enabled, but I could enable that. You can actually mm -hmm. get Google Analytics data into Matomo, which is very interesting. Um, there's a plugin for that. Um, you can get um, specific integration with WooCommerce, which is the okay. WordPress plugin for setting up a shop on WordPress. Um, Media user analytics, uh, you know, these are these these blue ones are paid. User yeah. flow is what I was talking about. Yeah, um, user flow is kind of interesting. Like I, I had used that um, in the past. In, in in a past life, I administered the school I worked at's LMS, mm -hmm. and we used user flow on there to kind of prove to people what students we're clicking on like we basically talk to students to like what's most important to you when you log into Moodle and then we kind of back that up with data from user flow which was kind of cool mm -hmm. and we're like yeah you know students are logging in they want they care about what's due next <laughs> so um yeah. you know it's, so there's there's some kind of cool uses for those tools I think um, I have a question and maybe a difference differs by plugin but are the blue plugins subscriptions or one-offs um i think it diff I, I think it differs by plugin, plugin but i'm yeah i okay so these are all per year so maybe these are truly all per year or some type of subscriptions okay yeah. yep um so it's important to note that everything in this marketplace, oh, that's not true. Okay, I was going to say everything in the marketplace is developed by Matomo, but that's not actually true. There are some KPI. there are some exceptions in here. Um, but all of the paid plugins that I've seen anyway are developed by Matomo. So um, mm -hmm. there are, yeah, there are subscriptions. I believe they also offer like a package, kind of like um, mm -hmm. Gravity Forms, where most what most people do is they sign up for a plan that includes many of the plugins. Um, so I, I think for most people, to be honest with you, you're not going to need these, um, but it's oh, worth pointing out that they exist. Bandwidth one looks very useful. Uh, it's down like two rows or maybe more now. Go. Yeah. Just, I, every once in a while we get, again, people going, why is my site so slow though? But why is it so slow? And 
speaking of just analytics, one of the places that I'll go is one of the stats that you can track in cPanel is bandwidth and how mm -hmm. much is being used overall per month. And then cPanel has some really just very brightly colored, uh, inaccessible, let's say, uh, <laughs> some pie charts. Some statistics, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, activating these um, is pretty simple. In some mm -hmm. cases, though, it requires some database updates okay. and things like that. So I'm going to do that here. Um, and it took like one second. But, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, I only have a certain type of data in mind. Um, I haven't used this plugin, so I don't really know where it uh, lives. lives and but but yeah it's live troubleshoot the, the cool i'm gonna make thing, a live troubleshoot right now the cool thing about matomo plugins though is they are like wordpress plugins and that there's mm -hmm. a marketplace for them and you can install them right in there and they will also let you know that their updates exist so it's it's not like a mecca where you have to manually upload and unzip and go check for updates yourself a lot of that can happen in the marketplace of matomo which is super cool um so um, I, I want to, I kind of want to move on to kind of show like, okay, so this is what the thing does, but how do I actually use it, right? Like, how do I set it up? It, I've got a clean install. Maybe you just followed along installing it in Installatron, but there won't be any data there until you integrate it with your existing websites that you want to integrate it with. So there's a couple things here. I will mention right at the top, there's this tag manager thing. I have not used this. Um, but this lets you do really advanced, like make multiple different tracking codes and stuff like that. I think most people don't need that. So the way, the way you're going to use it, and it will actually lead you in this direction when you first install it too, is there is a single tracking code that, that's mm -hmm. just a snippet of uh, JavaScript that's you know in a script tag. So it's HTML. Um, and you can just paste it in whatever website... It could be WordPress, it could be Omeka, it could be um, like my blog is a, is a static site generator mm -hmm. called Hugo. Um, it works with almost anything that lets you get at the HTML of the thing. So if I go to the administration button here and then uh, websites and then tracking code, this will give me my tracking code again. Okay. Um, so this is the basic one uh, for... Uh, it's just, it's just JavaScript. You can manually make other sites here, but I use the same one across um, everything, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also ways you can do image tracking. That's, I think, used more commonly for like email stuff. Um, but this, this uh, JavaScript code is kind of the standard. Um, there are also, interesting, has Cloudflare. I wonder what that... Mm -hmm. If your okay. site is closed on, okay, so. Oh, hosted on Cloudflare. So there's there's a lot of different ways to use it, but this is the bread and butter of all these things is this JavaScript tracking. Oh, codes. and they have um, right there installation guides for WordPress. Oh, cool. Squarespace, Wix, SharePoint. Yeah, so, so and it's it's um, um, for, for Matomo, they're probably gonna suggest you use the Matomo plugin, yeah. which you can totally use. I have not used this. Um, but you you totally can. <laughs> um, uh, but I also say there's also kind of more basic ways of doing this too. So um, for instance, for my blog, I literally just edited the template of my blog and put it in the footer of every page. Um, not manually. I put it in the footer so that it shows up on every page. Yeah. Um, and what I would suggest people do for WordPress is the same thing. So I've got here a recipe site that is don't visit this. There's nothing here. Um, but eventually, I want to make this a site. It's so that bustling uses... and vibrant, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can tell I put a lot of work into the design of it. Um, so, um, what I want eventually is to make a little uh, recipe site that I can like easily post on using like a form, like Gravity mm -hmm. Forms, and then I can convince my family members to use. Which that probably won't be successful. But um, yeah, I want to. I want a unified place to collect our recipes. So. Anyway, I'm going to put the tracking cook, uh, code in here. I don't actually want it here, but it's a good example website. So, um, uh, and it doesn't hurt anything for it to live here. So I'm going to log back in. Um, I accidentally like logged myself about my, all, all of my sites here. Um, yeah, what did you do? I, I 
click the button that clears cookies and site data and it oh, cleared it for have... everything that was jaden.me. Oh, <laughs> yep. Um, so let me actually log. I don't remember my actual, um, I don't remember my actual uh, recipe website WordPress account. I always use cPanel log into that one. So let me just get back in here. Cool. So right. here's my site. It has really nothing on it right now. Um, in fact, I think, yeah, it just has the generic plugins installed. Um, so what we're going to do, we could use a Matomo plugin, but actually I kind of like just putting it in the footer of the site, just like I did for my own blog site. Um, mm -hmm. So in this case, there's a few different things you can do. So really, we just need a way to get custom HTML onto every page of our WordPress site. Um, I'm using a full site editing theme. So that's actually really easy for me to do. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'll also mention, though, that if you're not using full site editing uh, theme, you're using a, a whatever they call non classic, I don't know. <laughs> um, if you're not using a full site editing theme, which you know most people aren't, <laughs> um, there are plugins that let you do this. You could also use the Matomo plugin. You could also use. A, uh, a widget. You could put it in the footer of your theme as a custom HTML widget. That would also work. Um, but I've also used plugins like this before, this insert headers and footers plugin. So mm -hmm. this lets you just put something in the header or the footer of your site. But I will say, if you're going to install a plugin, you might as well just go ahead and install the Matomo plugin, right? Um, but all your possibilities are possibilities. I like to mention them. So yeah. in my case, I'm just going to edit the theme a little bit. So I'm going to go to appearance and then editor. Well, not edit the theme, but you know, use full site editing. Um, and I'm going to just put it in the footer, but it, it doesn't really matter where it goes, honestly. Um, so if I just go to template parts here and then footer, um, oh, you can see that I tested this out before. Um, let me remove that. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So, so now that I'm editing the footer, I can add a new uh, block, um, and I'll add a custom HTML block. It doesn't actually matter where it goes, because you're not going to see anything. Um, and then I'm going to paste in that tag that I had copied from Matomo. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what the HTML looks like. If I click Preview, this is what it will actually look like, which is nothing. And I can just hit Save. And that's it. The tracking code is now on my recipe site. So if I go here, um, my I mentioned that my ad blocker blocks it. So I like to check, use that to check. So I can go in here and say, yep, analytics.jaden.me was blocked. Um, I could also, you know, refresh the page here and disable my ad blocker. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm on your site right now. So now if I go back to my Actually, Matomo. Maybe my ad blocker. I have no idea. Well, and I should have a couple from mine. Mm -hmm. And go back to the visits log here. Mm, didn't show up yet. Oh, this is yesterday. <laughs> I have to look I'll at today. It. So here we go. This is the visit. There's Firefox, and that's probably your IP, I imagine. Maybe not. I was using Chrome. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. It got my IP wrong. Wait, no, two actions? Two actions? What are those actions? What are oh, I... it's just saying that they refreshed the page twice, which I definitely just did. Oh, yeah. So no, I went through your... Of times that's, page. that's you, because I went through your posts instead to add more. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think your ad blocker is probably blocking it. Um, okay. which interesting. Is, which is interesting. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Oh no, yeah, yeah. So um so yeah, it's it's important to keep in mind too that like if the person is running an ad blocker, it will block these JavaScript tracking cookies. Um and um you know, that's how the web works. <laughs> so it's not um it's not this is no more or less really resilient in my experience than Google Analytics. Google Analytics will also get blocked by those same uh, mm -hmm. extensions. Actually, um, give it a refresh now. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. That's me. So, you know, that's that's as easy as it is. And now you might go like, okay, well, this is in with all the other data. Like, so this is where you, where all the other data from my blog and PeerTube and in the other places I have this tracking code, right? This is where you can use segments 
to break this out. So mm -hmm. if I click on all visits, I've made a few already. So I made ones for the main places I've linked this tracking code. So I've got just my blog here. These are the visitors to my blog today, theoretically. Um, this is my peer tube. Apparently someone watched a peer tube video today, or it looks like they went to my blog page on customizing the look of peer tube and then looked to see if I actually did the thing I blogged about, which is kind of interesting. But you can see these patterns, right? Like someone read a blog post about how I customized my peer tube and then they looked at it. Cool. That makes sense, yeah. right? Um, so I can make a segment for my recipe site. So I can just go add new segment and I'll call it recipes.jaden.me. And then if I change these, all these conditions, so I can change this actions and visit. There's a million things you can look at here, but I'm just going to use the URL. So I'll type page URL. And um, I'm going to go starts with, right? Not is, because um, otherwise it'll is cut would out be an any... exact match for only the home page, basically. Yeah, exactly. What it starts with, if I go in here and go HTTPS colon slash slash recipe, it's cool that it has an autocomplete. I really like that because you can make sure you didn't put a typo in, right? Mm -hmm. um, so anybody that goes to any URL starting with this, it will get added to this segment. And then I hit save and apply. And there we go. Now I've got just the visitors to my recipe site. So if I break this out and go like, okay, let's look at entirety of 2023, it should only have these two things because we only put the tracking code on there just now, right? Yeah. Um, whereas if I switch this out to my blog for 2023, it'll have more data. Um, but if you put the tracking code on there two months ago, it would have two only, months. But if, yeah, even though you only set up the, view oh yeah the segment yes that's important yeah because the data exists we're just filtering it right mm -hmm. so um maybe i'm trying to think of another place like uh this is kind of a bad example but like what if i wanted to find out how many people visited a particular page now there is actually reports for this mm -hmm. but let's say i was really interested um in a par very particular sure. like archive or something. Yeah. Um, I could make a segment for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I could go in here right now and make a new segment. And in this case, um, I'll do page URL still, but, um, I could go with is actually, um, that's the only thing. it's the only page I'm concerned with. Right. Um, you can name this, whatever you want. I just like to go by URL that works with my brain better mm -hmm. um and i'll see i bet you probably not a lot of people go into the archive page <laughs> but um because it has this data available to it um i can get all of the mentions of that so oh. and the people who do go in there go nuts because it's an archive yeah good point i suppose this is probably well this is interesting so this is what it thought was my IP earlier, but I don't know that I would have clicked on that. Oh, you know what this is? This is when I'm site archiving. <laughs> oh. My yep. site archiving toolkit, which I Chrome test on my own blog a lot, goes and clicks on every link on the page. <laughs> oh, that'll do it. Yeah, and that's, that's also so why it funny. says you're running Chrome and Linux, even yep. though you For sure. Firefox. I don't use Chrome uh, as my primary browser, and I usually use Mac OS as my primary OS. Yeah. That's so interesting. Okay. So, so this thing you, that we said was nobody was going to be looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's really cool. But this is the kind of stuff you can figure out, right? Like mm -hmm. this is very obviously the work of a web crawler, right? Yep. Um, it did because we, things you and I know minutes. this, but it is not, you know, a Google bot or anything. Or not less than 15 minutes, but um, yeah, well, yeah, 100 actions in 16 minutes, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and if I go to visitor profile, it'll probably, you know, it'll probably have a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, it's also interesting that like this desktop resolution is kind of weird. Like that's yeah. not, you know, so anyway. It's from a generic device to <laughs> generic <laughs> desktop 1x. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. Um, so this is the kind of stuff you can find. And this is a good example of like, hey, this is a segment I just made, right? So mm -hmm. um, the cool thing is 
if in the example of you are running a WordPress multi-site and you someone says, hey, how many people have visited this website in the last two years? If mm -hmm. you've had the tag tracking across the multi-site for two years, you can filter that data now because you have it, right? Um, and that I think is really cool um, and in a really um, kind of unique uh, way to handle it versus saying like, okay, well, you know, we do it at the, the site level, sub-site yep. level. And so you have to start tracking in now and you won't know anything until, you know, a Unless year from now yeah. when you can look back. Um, I was, I was going to say, that also seems really, in terms of like particular use cases, I'm imagining like a project that needs grant funding, like anything that you would need to be able to say, yeah, we get a lot of visitors. Our work is, the, obviously, obviously the work is very important, but for people who will want to be able to deliver those statistics, for them to come to you and say, so, hey, were you tracking this information at any point? And if so, can I have a copy? Yeah. It's much nicer than being able to say, I can start tracking that now. I could see it even being useful from the perspective of like backing up your project. Not mm -hmm. sorry, not backing up, but like to talking about your project to yeah. admins or other people and saying like, no, like people visit this. This is an important thing. It it, it holds some important sites. You know, you can get from this uh, tracking information. You can get stuff like, oh, like tell me the most visited page title, mm -hmm. right? Um, so unique page views. Let's say um, that's in my case my homepage of my blog. But mm -hmm. after that, during the month of May, my peer to blog um, post specifically, and I'll say that's really interesting. I've, I've, tr I've seen this before, for whatever reason, my, my customizing peer to blog post is much more popular than anything else I do. This is a, an anomaly. I made a site that let people look at statistics for, um, sorry, results of a soul ensemble music festival um, <laughs> that my wife runs. So there was like a lot of people visiting it on one day, but that's an anomaly. <laughs> um, you can also see how long people spent on it. Yeah. Well, and I should say, to be fair, this, maybe this is a good example. I did this for Abby's school and we, we did this because we thought it was important and worthwhile. And I put the tracking code on there to say, I think it was important and worthwhile. We had 1,100 people look at this tool. And in our case, we were saying we should have a website where people can look at the results of this thing mm -hmm. um, instead of just printing the paper. And my obviously arterial motive was, is like, I think eventually we shouldn't print the paper. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe someday, but you can see how it was because I had this already, I had Matomo, I could just quickly add that tag to the page and then make a segment for it and determine, oh, cool. Like people are using this today. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, it's, it's interesting the stuff you can figure out. And um, I think, you know, potentially super valuable. So, um, and, and I think this is a responsible way to do it, right? Because you're not hand, you're not forklifting all of this data over to some other company that's also going to use it for advertising. It stays mm -hmm. in house for. Yeah, for exactly. Um, so, you know, I'm hosting this in cPanel. If you were, say, using a WordPress multi-site with us that's on Reclaim Cloud, you could separately run Matomo in a cPanel on shared hosting. You could do it on Domain of One's Own. You could do it in Reclaim Cloud if you wanted to. You could make a little environment for it and run it in there. Um, the, you have a lot of different options. You could run it some, you could host it someplace else if you wanted to. You could host it yourself if you've got someone who wants to do that, right? It doesn't have to live in the same place, so then it has mm -hmm. none of the performance downsides of, of uh, doing all of this inside of WordPress or, or whatever tool you're looking at tracking. Or in mm -hmm. my case, you know, my blog has no capability for any of that, so right. my only option is to use either this or cPanel's own tools, um, yeah. which honestly I'm fine with for my blog, but this is kind of neat, and I, I've been able to learn from it by, you know, using it. So I will say the interface is a lot nicer, I, in my opinion, than yeah, it's also real time. So cPanel's tools have to crunch through the web logs and they only do it once a day. So yeah. you can only ever look back. Usually at the earliest you'll get it is a day old stuff. Um, sometimes it's worse. I, some of the tools are only looking at like weeks and months. 
Mm -hmm. um, whereas this is pretty real time. It's also why it's slow. So I, it's not that it doesn't look that slow, but like, I guess, but like if I have logged into Matomo and it's been a long time, when you log in is when it crunches all the numbers. So it can take a second for it to load everything. And by it's slow, I mean up. 10 or 15 seconds, right? That's mm -hmm. to me pretty slow. Um, whereas, um, you know, right now I'm clicking on things and they're just, you know, popping the reports up pretty quickly. Right. Um, but it's important to note that this isn't really like, if you know, if you've ever, you can kind of see this with WordPress too, where like, if you do like an update to WordPress or it's been a while and you log in an Elementor or maybe some other plugin, they'll be like, I have to do database upgrades. Can I do that now? It's kind of the same thing. You, you may have, if it's been a while, it can take a few seconds for the server to crunch through all of the new data that it has to go through. So, um, but in my experience, it's not a big deal. Um, and again, it doesn't affect your actual site's loading time in any meaningful way. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, that was a little crash course, I guess, on, you know, why, what Matomo can do, why you might want to use it, and real quick demo of how you can set it up and integrate it with a WordPress site. Um, but like, like I said, you know, you could throw that tracking code on anything um, that lets you edit the site. You could use it, you know, we should use this for Ghost. We should use this for our Roundup. Actually, right now we have no tracking on really any of our sites, which I do like. So mm -hmm. maybe we don't, but, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. it, it's, it's cool for filling those gaps in tools. So I periodically get emails. That's like someone signed up for the roundup. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be cool to know how many people are visiting it, but we don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's um, fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining me on this Matomo journey. Thank um, you. This was very cool. And I'm going to go set this up now. <laughs> Great. Um, right. And, uh, you know, everyone watching this, jump in Discord. Let us know if you have any more questions. But mm -hmm. thanks for spending the time with us. Yeah. Go get that donut, Taylor. I will. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. <laughs>